Finland Saga, Season 2, Episode 6. We need a horse. For what? Oh good, are we back to Einar and Thorfinn? Last episode was so good, but it's kind of intense. Damn, my dude's getting ripped from all this lumber pulling. This is good, honest work. <laughs> yes. Wood training. That is uh, seriously impressive. He has like, just no leverage on that. Almost had a, sh a shonen anime moment there. Now I understand their physiques. Yeah, that also explains why we need a horse. Yeah. Talk to the boss if you can. He seems pretty chill. He just wants the field cleared. Still with this. Still. That walking away laughter really, really sealed it. <laughs> why is this so... I don't know why is this so thrilling. This weird mini-drama on this farm. Two bros versus the retainers. <laughs> I, I don't know, it's so, so amazing. What the hell? On the surface, it's kind of a lighthearted, whimsical conversation, but it's like bringing tears to my eyes just because of the context and backdrop. Last time I saw these two, they were, well, Einar was choking <laughs> Thorfinn out. Thorfinn was so deep, deep in his nightmare that he didn't even notice he was being choked out. A lot of bad blood got cleared out of the air just from their goodness. A lot of that being Einar's goodness. What a bro. It also means a lot because Einar is asking Thorfinn to care about the land and freedom, but deeper than that, I think from my perspective, is asking him to care about living. I understand him not being in a super rush to get back out into that world, but you want to see it, you know? I want to see him find something great to live for. And I think Einar's spirit is just so amazing. I think a lot of existential torment that people experience comes from either not having a vision of, of something truly great that matches their spirit that they're working towards, or having one but feeling like they just cannot make any progress or that it's impossible. It's hard to even tell that that's the case sometimes, but it becomes clear when you start moving out of it. You know, like if you start actually working towards something that feels beautiful and you can see that, wow, this is happening slowly, but it's happening. Even if you're not there yet or haven't arrived anywhere yet, at least for me, it, it immediately kind of cleans out some of that frustration. Things feel clearer. There's more joy and energy in what I do. For Thorfinn looking at Einar, perhaps it's like, okay, we get free of our slavery, we plant this crop, and then what? We still have to figure out all the rest of it. And that's not wrong, but Einar is so fixated on this one goal that it's allowing him to have this vitality and spirit that's contagious. Here comes a new challenger. Looks like Iroh from the back. Well, let me not get ahead of myself here. Maybe if he's in better shape. I think I just want to see Iroh. <laughs> get a horse? Are you a spirit? Are you real? What a... What? What do you want? <laughs> what do you want to return? What are you asking? Who do we have to kill? Whatever it is, we are not sleeping with the young master. That's just too far. Oh, I knew he was going to say that. <laughs> when you do someone else's workout, you think you're strong until you step into someone else's world. And in the end, he's like, You see, fellas, the horse was in your hearts the whole time. You are the horses. <laughs> that is a possibility that I am considering. I haven't seen a horse yet. Maybe see the horse first. Can you show us the horse? Do you have evidence that there is a horse? A hoof print, perhaps. Horseshoes. Yes, that is something I have considered. That's a good question. 
Old man Swirkle came through. I just fired up. Just having a great time. It's making me miss my farming work. Farming days. Good, clean, physical labor. Maybe that's what I was actually made for. Maybe this is my calling, but I would need it. Aner. Everyone looks so different. Looks like an adult. And we got a bro shoulder pat. And no one's mom had to die. Except for Aner's. Alright, so if I'm understanding this correctly, they're making their own crops, which is interesting. They get an allotment of land. That's pretty cool. A stake in their work. Eh, <laughs> It's kind of snowy and icy. I remember correctly. And yeah, also that. Also that. Could just go away. Right? <laughs> He's done with everything. They don't care. That's not why. It's not about the logistics. They just hate you. You know why? Because they're, they, they have nothing. They have nothing. They're just miserable people. And miserable people want to inflict their pain on people with whom they can get away with it. So he is a phantom. They are the chosen ones. Ah. Wow, maybe we actually did avoid this conflict after all. All you gotta do, do is name drop Klevsky. Let that be the last of you. <laughs> Let that be the end of this conflict, you fools. Ainer's just like taking over this whole farm. We'll just wait till the war comes. We'll see who is the overgrown baby then, as you cower behind Thorfinn. Actually, Inner will probably be right there next to him. <laughs> I kind of I relate to the son actually a little bit in this stubborn fathers. What can you do? Just gotta love them for who they are. Oh, that's where we part ways. I totally would share my slaves with my father. <laughs> that's just you're not a good son if you're not sharing your slaves with your dad. If you don't share slaves with your father, can you call yourself a son? He's not alone. He's got friends. What gave it away? This guy. Slavsky's got a lot of friends. You know what would wake him up? Raise a knife over his head. Yeah. Is that what you wanted to happen? <laughs> you know, I kind of relate to Snake here a little bit. Yeah, that's my excuse as well. Patrolling for thieves at night. Important work, someone's got to do it. Yes. Yes, wow, this was so huge for them, having never had any full meals up to this point, it seems. 
I don't know. I don't know. That's fair. That is true. But this is the world of Vinland Saga, and there's always some something terrible coming. I feel like they're going to be very grateful for Snake and Thorfinn. Maybe or later. I mean, they're arguing, but all I hear is love. Grandpa likes, he likes it. He likes our company. Foreshadowing, maybe. Probably. I've been expecting that since day one. Well, not if Thorfinn's here, to be honest. You're going to need a bigger army. That is a black swan event waiting to happen. Was that Thorfinn recognizing the name? I figure he knows the connection to Knut, though. Yeah, it seems like there's some truth to that. The more you have, the more you have to lose. Even in a world where we don't have roving bands of Vikings, that's true to an extent. At great quantities of money, there are steps you have to take to protect it. And a lot of times those include extra costs. Though it's a hell of a lot easier and better now than for them. Someone can just roll up with a band of 60 people or a thousand people since Thorfinn's here and just take it. I mean, in all fairness, he's probably earning his pay. Even if he's doing nothing every day, like one day something's gonna happen, he'll be there and he'll he's risking his life. It's kind of like a male lion, you know, just sleeping all day until there's a threat. Snake seems... Wiser? More worldly? I learned something today. Okay, Kyle. Yeah, I don't know. I'll take it. I'll take that problem, I guess. But not if it means roving Viking gangs. Really growing out that facial hair. Uh, I don't know what it means. I was never, I never had friends as a kid. I had Asklad. What is an Asklad? Is that a friend? Hmm, I feel very conflicted about this. It's a little too heartwarming. My anime tragedy radar is firing once again. <laughs> Just, you can't be too happy. It's, you're inviting, oh, it's Thorfinn. I'll be alright. And bro Aner will have his back no matter what, I could just tell. Wholesome Sokka, <laughs> suddenly. <laughs> what the hell? Alright, I'm in for the ride. I'm, I'm there with the two, two guys. We're bros. We're in this together, looking for purpose. Focusing on our goal of making our farm, building something and getting free. Piece by piece, day by day, log by log. I feel the climb. For me, this is very similar in what I enjoy to a training montage or a training sequence or a training arc. We got a goal and it feels impossibly far away. It's huge. It's bigger than us. And to take it all on at once and imagine the whole thing would be daunting and impossible and we'd probably give up. But we just have hope and faith and we put one foot in front of the other and give each step our everything. Never hold anything back. You just let let time work. You just let incremental progress build. You let the compound interest of growth take its grip on your trajectory. They couldn't imagine the sum total of all the logs that they ripped out of the, the ground and all the rocks they had to pick up and all the seeds they had to throw. They just focus on one tree at a time and they can see it. You know, these, you look back, you see the land is cleared and you go to sleep thinking I'm one day closer. I'm that inch closer to this thing that means so much to me. And the feeling that even if you're not where you want to be, you're moving towards where you want to be at a pace that's reasonable and will let you accomplish something great that you really want and covet. That's good enough for now. You know, that's great. It's amazing. This is a very weird comparison, but I thought about this a lot, waiting for trains. Let's say you know for a fact that the time it'll take you to arrive at the train station, board the train, and get to your destination is one hour. That one hour feels very different if you're on the train moving the whole time versus if you wait on the platform for 20 minutes and then take the train for 40 minutes. It's the same amount of time. But that 20 minutes feels endless and terrible because there's no movement at all. You just spend all your time looking at the ar arrival time, like when is the train coming? You peer down the platform. It's frustrating. Frustrating, get antsy. For me, getting on the train, like I breathe a sigh of relief because I'm moving. 
like, okay, I know I'm get getting there. I think there's some parallel there for kind of existential dread about life and just sort of ennui of feeling stuck. There's got to be something. There's got to be a purpose. It's just how we're wired. I mean, it's so beautiful that they're building something. You know, they're literally building a garden in this world of war and bloodshed, especially contrasted to the last episode with Canute, which is on this rampage, just murdering people to get his way in the name of peace, paradise, or what have you. This is so local but so sweet and in its way, very grand. This is a rhetorical question with no answer, but I think it's fun to think about who has more. Does Canute have more with his conquering of England? Or does Thorfinn and Aenor have more with their little patch of land? And that may sound cheesy because, oh, you know, they have the power of friendship, whatever, but like, I, I know, I feel it. I feel there's something glorious about what they're doing, who they are. And Canute's episode gave me the creeps. It made me feel really weird. Now, as I asked last episode, what happens when these two stories intersect? That's gonna be very interesting to see which is more powerful, who wins out, which ideology is the right one.